I grew up, I grew up in multiple places. I was born in California. My parents were divorced, I think before I was even born. And then my mom married my stepdad. And then we moved here to Ann Arbor area when I was in first grade. So it kind of split the two because my dad stayed in California and my mom and stepdad were here. So kind of grew up between the two. I was working in Chicago. I worked at quite a few of some of the best chefs in Chicago. And then during that whole time I was living in Chicago, I, um, I knocked up a girl here in Ann Arbor. So that being said, it was no question for me I was moving here. You know, I wasn't not going to be around and there was no option of us being in Chicago with like no help. That was really the deciding point. So it wasn't decided. I did not decide to be here. Um, not that I don't love it and enjoy it and I'm happy for everything. Um, but that's really what it's kind of the story, I guess. Through my work in Ann Arbor, the place I'm most proud of would be Raven's Club. Like in the very beginning when I was there, like Friday night, Saturday night, like it was fucking dead. It was like, yeah, people were out there in the dining room and like drinking and the bar was busy, but nobody was eating. Me and the owners were talking about like, we want to kind of do this and some of these other places in Chicago that are cocktail and food focused. And at the end of the day, there was a point where we were both just like, fuck it. We're going to do what we do. And from then on, our press just, I mean, it was stupid. I mean, there was like. We were in the papers, we were on the news. We were getting write-ups probably every week, two weeks. People were loving it. And our dining room was packed by 5.15. I mean, the ticket board was just, looked like fucking you won the jackpot Chuck E. Cheese. And it felt great. I feel like I was part of the team that brought the whole Ravens Club together and we turn it into a pretty respected place in the city and beyond. So that's probably my proudest moment of probably my whole career. I was doing a publication in a magazine called Life and Time and they asked me to write something about it. And the only thing I could think of was how I was getting burnt out about the restaurant life. I mean, my son at the time was now turning, he was turning five and it just blew my mind it happened so quick. So I knew I had to get out of the restaurant industry. With that being said, I decided to write my essay on leaving the restaurant industry. And I hadn't even told Ravens Club I was leaving yet. And the editor was like, oh, this is great. We're gonna put it in next month. I was like, oh shit. I was like, okay. So I went to the owner of Ravens Club and I was like, hey man, like, I gotta put in my, my two month notice and they're writing this piece about me quitting. So I guess I'm quitting. The planning of Ricewood and the planning of going out on my own and creating my own business was about as thought out as anything else I've done in my life, which is like fucking nothing. I really had a hobby of barbecuing at the time. So me and my family, my son and my lady at the time were eating barbecue rice bowls. I'm like, oh man, these are really good. So I was like, fuck it, let's do that. My end goal was, was with my son in mind. And it was, to me, he's always gonna go to school, he's always gonna do stuff in the day. So we set up our very first business, Monday through Friday, lunch only. Like as long as my bills are paid, and I'm, I'm having dinner with my son every single night. I was like, that's what's important to me. That's all I care about. And I didn't have a name, I didn't have any equipment, had no sign, had no logo, I didn't have a location, I had nothing. So from the day I quit, we built a whole entire business in 32 days. I got a food truck, I got smokers, I got with suppliers and found my products, and it was just me and my little brother and we just hustled every single day. We just made it happen. I mean, every single day is sold out within 90 minutes. And then now we're like in the middle of year three and we've increased more product. And now it's still selling out by like 12.30. We're like, 12.15 on a Friday, like 75 minutes, and we're sold out again. It's just, it's really crazy. And turns out you can open up a lunch place Monday through Friday behind a liquor store with no sign and do okay. So 
Ja. The idea of Malu's after Ricewood is funny because fried chicken was one of the original, it was probably the original business I wanted to do. I really love fried chicken, I always have. I've always loved like the fried chicken, like kind of the culture of the shop. You know what I mean? It's kind of like just whatever. Like if you were to go have fried chicken at some white table probably, it wouldn't taste as good or you, your expe expectation would be too high. When you're ordering some greasy ass chicken and you're coming in like a styrofoam thing and you have styrofoam cups and like shit's greasy and it's gross, like that's part of it, you know? I, I think our chicken is, is, is really good. I think we, we, we have a good product. As long as the food tastes good, the food's coming out on time and everyone's happy, I don't, I don't give a shit. Our future as a company is very, I don't, I don't know, I teeter-totter with it all the time. It's like, okay, do we just, do I personally just kind of chill the fuck out and maybe enjoy this ride? Or do we push more, 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 more? And that's one of my fears, especially like growing rice wood, you know? At the end of the day, we can just fucking not change a thing about rice wood and we'd all be very happy. Working six to eight months a year and making good money and all, all our bills are paid, our employees are paid, i lose the same way, you know? Maybe I'll just chill out one day. It's not gonna happen. So we'll, we'll expand. We'll expand both at some point. It might be the type of person I am, or just in general, but there's no way that me personally, I can be a great chef, a great business owner, and a great dad, and on top of that being some sort of spouse or having a relationship, I can't do that, you know? So to me, it was either, you're gonna be an okay dad and a great chef, or you're gonna be a great dad and an okay chef. And to me, it's not, it's not one or the other. So basically, it was my way of quitting the chefdom, becoming an owner, and being a great dad. end goal i'm gonna drop that kid off at whatever college he goes to or if he doesn't want to go to college whatever he's 18 done with high school and i'm retiring in buenos aires fuck it that's it